Good morning, Meeting House Church. How's everyone doing? Everyone, if you could just please come take your seats. If you've got food, Adriana's in the back to help you take care of it. I am so happy to see everybody here. Today is our prayer and worship potluck service. We're going to have 12 people getting baptized. It is a great day to be at Meeting House Church, so thank you for being here. What I want to do right now is if you're new here, we have a connection card. What I want you to do is I just want you to reach around in the back of your chair, and I want you to grab this. And if you have prayer requests, I want you to grab this and just fill it out with as much information as you feel comfortable with, and then stick it in the offering plate at the end of the service as it comes around. So what I want to encourage everybody to do today, as it is our prayer and worship, is we spend a lot of time in prayer on these particular Sundays. And in the book of Acts, it talks about us praying together as a community, praying with one another and with one voice. So what we're going to do is I want to challenge you here in a minute. We're going to pray. And this is what I want your prayer to be out loud at your table with everyone that's around you. I want you to pray that God moves you this morning. We don't have a typical sermon. We've got more music than, uh, than we do that. But music moves people in the right direction. God used music throughout all of scripture to impact people. So that's what we're going to do right now. So as you're sitting down with your table, I just want you to pray with one another for a couple of minutes. Just ask God to move you and do what Acts calls us to do as uh, believers, as Christians, and just pray out loud with one another. So go ahead and take your time to do that now. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we're here this morning to worship you. God, we're here this morning to, to sing your praises and, and to take up communion for, for the fact that you sent your son to die on a cross. God, I just ask that we allow ourselves to be immersed in the music. We allow ourselves to be led by your Holy Spirit and, and be impacted this morning. God, that, that we just take the feeling that we get this morning, this feeling of just wanting to love you and to serve you, and we take it throughout our lives, and we use it to grow in our relationship with you. We use it to reach other people for your name, because you sent your son to die on a cross, not just for us, you, you sent it for everybody. So God, this morning, as, as we get ready to sing some songs, God, just allow us just to push what's going on in our lives out of our minds. Just help us to focus on you this morning, God, and just help us to, to jump up and down with praise, to dance in the aisles, to sing for joy your name, because you, God, deserve all glory, all honor, and all praise. And in your son's holy name, amen. Amen, church. Well, it's good to see you this morning. As Bobby said, we're going to spend some time singing this morning. Scripture, God's Word, tells us many, many times to sing, to lift our voices and praise to God, and that's what we're going to do today. As you can see very clearly, it's not a typical setup, so feel free to move your chairs around, feel free to sit, feel free to stand, to kneel. Uh, we don't care. Whatever helps you meet with God this morning, that's what we're about. So let's spend some time worshiping Him today in song. Sing, I was buried. I was buried beneath my shame. Well, who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Well, I was breathing. But not alive And all my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb 
till I met you. You called my name. what Jesus came to do for us this morning to rescue us from sin and death. It's good news. Amen. Let's sing. I needed a rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healer. Your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open when you call my name.
Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who you sent freely, freely to us because of your great love for us, Lord. You didn't want to leave us in the position we were in, separated from you. Um, you weren't satisfied with that, Lord. So uh, Jesus came and, and paid the price that we owe because of what we've done to sin against you. So uh, Lord, open up our hearts and minds to your truth. Uh, just reveal it to us, Lord, and glorify yourself today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys can have a seat, and kids, you are dismissed to Meeting House Kids. You can find your teachers in the back of the room. Hey, good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good to see you here. We're, we're, we're pretty full. We've, if, your ta- if your town table is full, it's okay. There's a, there's a few empty seats right here. Um, if your town table's full, we can get some more in the back. But uh, it's great to see you this morning. We've got a great day. Um, my name is James Thomason. I'm the lead pastor here at Meeting House Church. And uh, if this is your first time with us, then I would love to get a chance to meet you. Just say hello, learn your name, okay? It'll be a little bit, but after the service, uh, I'll be hanging around probably for a little bit back there under the words Connection Center, okay? Um, So come back there and say hello, and I'll try to get around uh, while we're eating to say hello to everybody as well, okay? All right, uh, let's see, what do we got? We got a great day. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. As you see, uh, you're seated, right, at tables with your town name on them, okay? And that's on purpose, obviously. But uh, here's here's the purpose behind this, right? We're trying to create in our in our church family a sense of fellowship, right, and love for one another, right? We want to be like the church in the book of Acts. And uh, they, they loved one another, they fellowshiped with, with one another, they ate together, uh, they celebrated communion or the Lord's Supper together. So what we're going to do today, we're going to worship together, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper together, we're going we're gonna to eat together. And then also, I, I'd like you to take the time to say hello, to get to know the people at your table, because our ultimate goal here is... We, are, we represent 24 different towns, 23 in Massachusetts and one in Rhode Island, okay? And so what we want to try to do is to get Bible study, home groups started in, in, in every town, okay? Um, so, for instance, on Thursday nights, we open up our house to the young adults every Thursday night. They all come over, Christy makes cookies, we hang out, we talk, we, uh, we have, a, have a good time. We, we pray, we uh, read the Bible together, do a Bible study. We've got a few groups going on here at the church. You can see that's what happen, what, what's happening page. Uh, that's got everything that goes on throughout the week. We've got a few that have already started, 
um, in towns. We've got one here in Middleborough. We've got one down in Rochester. We've got another that just started in Bridgewater, okay? And uh, so it's not hard. Just got to open, you know, maybe vacuum before everybody comes over, you know, take the trash out. That's what we always do, right? And you just have people come over once a week, once every other week. You have a good time, okay? Um, and, of course, I'm looking, we're looking to train facilitators for those. Uh, some of you I've already approached. Um, I've already talked to the two Bible studies that I lead. Uh, we're going to train them. It's, it's not hard just to be a facilitator of one of those groups. Um, and, and we need to get those in place so we can really uh, be the body of Christ that God wants us to be, okay? All right, let's get to uh, our, our, our passage of Scripture today. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And uh, this, in, this, this introduces to us the gospel, okay? And, and we'll get into that. And then we're going to really, when we, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper or communion, what we're, what we're remembering is what Jesus did for us in his death and resurrection, which is the gospel, okay? So let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 1. All right, and if you want to help me out with those uh, highlighted words, I would really appreciate it. Now, my brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of what? Of the gospel I preach to you, which you what? Received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, we have what? believed. We have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. And here it is, what? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Now you may not know this, but the Apostle Paul wrote that to the church in the city of Corinth which is in southern Greece, okay, in the year 5152 A.D. So only less than 20 years after Christ's death and resurrection, Paul wrote that, okay? And so the gospel, Paul writes and he wants to remind the Corinthians and us of the gospel. What, is, what does gospel mean? What does that word mean? It means good news. That's what it means. Good news. The gospel is the good news about what Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did for you and for me and for all of humanity to gain us forgiveness, the opportunity for forgiveness of our sins, the sins that we've committed against God and one another, which separate us from God, and to give us New life with God now and forever. That's, that's the gospel. That's the good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died and rose again so you can be and I can be forgiven of our sins. We can have a relationship with God that begins now and lasts forever in eternity. That's, that's the gospel in a nutshell. And Paul says, by this gospel, we are saved. We are saved. That word means rescued. It, it's what lifeguards do for people at the beach when they're drowning. They rescue them. Jesus came. God sent his son to rescue us. To rescue us from, from our sin, from, from life without him, from eternity without him. Every one of us has sinned against God and rebelled against him in, in, in various ways, right? Right? God created you to love you. That's why, that's why you're breathing. God created you to live in a loving relationship with Him. To love you and to have you love Him back as your, as your Father, as your God, as your Creator. Right? The problem is, is that every one of us, myself, all of you, and all of humanity, have said to God's creative purpose no, thank you, God. I want to do life on my terms, in my way, not yours in relationship with you. That's what sin is. It is rejecting God and his purpose for us. It's that simple. 
And every one of us have done it, right? God says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one of us to our own ways. So God wants to rescue us. Jesus came to rescue us from the consequences of that sin and rebellion against God, which is God's justice, God's judgment, which is life and eternity separated from him. Even though you and I have rebelled and sinned against God, God loves you still. God loves us still. He loves us with what the Bible calls a redeeming love. He wants to redeem us, to to buy us out of our life apart from Him and back into relationship with Him. God looks at us as people, as men and women, boys and girls, who He created for Himself to enjoy Him, to love Him, to worship Him, uh, for Him to actually enjoy and love us. He looks at us as rebels and he says, and, and separated from him, and he says, that is not my plan for you. I want to buy you back to myself. And the price that God paid in order to do that was the life of his son, Jesus Christ. Christ died and rose back to life three days later, according to the scriptures. Do you know that there's three over 300 prophecies foretellings about the Messiah in the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament. Jesus Christ fulfilled every one of them. And later this morning, Caleb is going to read one to us from Isaiah chapter 53, which was written 700 years before Jesus was born and describes His death and resurrection for us perfectly. Think about that. 700 years before Jesus was even born, his death and resurrection, God foretold it through the prophet Isaiah. Christ died for our sins. Jesus suffered on the cross. I want to help you understand what happened on the cross this morning and why it is. Okay. First of all, I want to let you know this. That God is not accountable to anybody but Himself. Do you understand that? God is not, God is not accountable to a higher uh, a system of justice, right? There's no one that can, that, that, that can arrest God for, for breaking the law. There's, God is not accountable to a higher uh, um, reality of love than Himself. God is... Uh, the definition of love and justice, of righteousness and grace, right? God is accountable only to Himself. And He created us all for a relationship with Him. And when we rebelled against Him, God had only His own sense of justice and love to satisfy. And because God is just, He can't say to us in our sin, hey, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I don't mind you lying, cheating, stealing, cursing me, you know, cursing other people. I I don't mind that. Why? Because that's unjust. It's unrighteous. Right? If somebody stole something from you and you took them to court and it was clearly proven to the judge and the jury that this person stole something from you and they said, ah, oh, that's okay, we'll just let him off. Don't worry, you don't have to pay it back, you don't, have, don't worry about it. You just, you, just, you just have to suffer the loss and, and, and he'll just go on his way. How would you feel about that decision? Not good, would you? Why? Because it would be unjust. Right? But I want you to understand also that because God is love, because God loves us, He satisfied His own sense of justice, His own own character, right? Himself, by inflicting on Himself a wound, the judgment due to you and me for our sin. On His Son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, of course, willingly received that. 
because of God's love for you and for me, he chose to take responsibility for our sin. He chose to sacrifice himself, his son, instead of us. God's love is wonderful. Think about that. No one else to accountable to but himself. And God chose to take responsibility for our sin on himself. What a wonderful, wonderful thing God did. What a wonderful God he is. So when Christ died for our sins, he died in our place. He took what we deserved. He took the justice that we deserved so we could receive the grace, love, and mercy that we don't deserve. That's what happened at the cross. And he rose again three days later. Jesus took our sin and God's judgment into hell and left it there and rose victorious over it to offer whosoever will forgiveness and freedom and eternal life now and forever with He and the Father and the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel. This is the gospel on which we received and which we have taken our stand and which we believe, right? We are saved not by what we do, not by what we can do or could possibly do. We're not saved by being good people. We are saved by what Jesus Christ did for us and our trust and reliance on Him. Right? It is on Him that I take my stand. I don't stand on my own record before God. I stand on Jesus' record, right? We don't stand on our own track records before God, but on Jesus' track record. His death, His resurrection for our sin. Believing, trusting, taking our stand. It's, by, it's through faith that we are saved. In what God did for us. God sent Jesus Christ to die and rise again because it, because it was the only way to pay for our sin. Because it was the only way to rescue us from our sin. Because it was the only way to give us eternal life with God now and forever. God offers you today, if you have not put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you have not turned from your life away from Him to Jesus for salvation, he, that's what He offers you today. Rescue and eternal life through faith. So now we understand the gospel. And before we get to uh, celebrating communion or the Lord's Supper with one another, I want to prep you, okay? So at each table, there are cups, and there's some juice, and there is some matzah bread on plates, all right? Now, you can do this if you have a lot of people. These are clusters of two tables each. You can do them two and two, or you could do it all at one, okay? But what I'd like you to do is the most senior man willing at the table, okay, what you're going to do is, uh, so no, no fights over that, you know, just somebody just give way there, and, uh, and somebody step up, let's not have everybody step back, okay, so the most senior man willing at each table, you're going to be the, uh, the, the you're going you're gonna to lead the Lord's Supper at, at your table, okay, I'm going to have you pour cups for everybody, and then I'll have you pass the bread for everybody, okay, and I'll tell you what to say at the proper time, everybody got that? Ready? Don't worry about it. You can't mess it up. It's okay. Now, let's get to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now you're prepped. Don't start yet. I, just, I was just prepped. Don't start yet. Hang on. Don't start yet. I, that was just preparation, just, just so it wouldn't shock you when we got to it. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 23. John, he's not... He's going. 
All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's start here. Paul addresses what we're going to do today uh, directly, okay? And he says again, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said what? This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Now when you hear that word covenant in the Bible, what it means is relationship. Jesus Christ created a new covenant relationship for us with God. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes or returns. Verse 27. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to do what? Examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are sick and a number of uh, weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Okay? So when Paul says discern the body of Christ, right there he's he's addressing a very specific problem that was going on in in the church in Corinth. And they were having some infighting and disagreement in that church. And so they were dividing the body of Christ. And Paul is addressing them and saying, hey, listen, when you come together to, 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 to celebrate the Lord's Supper, you can't come together with bitterness. You can't come together with disagreement and division, right? That's not discerning the body of Christ, right? We are the body of Christ, right? That's what Jesus said. The church is his body. And Jesus wants his body united, right? And so I want us to take a few moments of self-examination, okay? Caleb's going to play over this time, and I want you to just ask the Holy Spirit, to reveal to you anything that you need to confess to God, any, any issues that you might have with another person in our church family, you need to forgive that person. Anything that you might to need to seek forgiveness for, okay, from another person in this body of Christ or somewhere else. And then I want you to make the plan to go and, and seek the forgiveness that you need to seek. Or make the confession that you need to make, okay? So whatever God puts on your heart, whatever the Holy Spirit brings to your mind, you just, you just confess, you just allow, allow the Holy Spirit to search your mind and heart, okay? And examine you, all right? Let's, let's pray. Father God, Lord, I confess to you that I'm a man of unclean lips. 
of unclean eyes and unclean mind, Lord, and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips and unclean eyes and unclean mind. Lord, we, I thank you and praise you for your great love for us. So great, God, that you took upon yourself the responsibility for my sin, for our sin. God, I thank you and praise you for your promises of forgiveness. God, I thank you according to your word, you have separated us from our sin as far as the east is from the west. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, I just want to quote a passage of scripture to you real quick. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we claim to be without sin, we make God out to be a liar, verse 10, and his word has no place in us. And then John goes on in chapter 2. He says, I write, to, I write to this to you, my children, so that you will not sin. But if any of you does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one, right? Jesus stands in our place before God for us. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the sacrifice, the, the propitiation, the sacrifice that satisfied the justice of God for our sins. But not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. That's God's, that's God's love for you. That's, God's, that's what Christ bought for you. Amen? That's a wonderful, wonderful thing, right? So, now we can take the bread and the cup, okay? So if I'll have the most senior man willing at each table, please uh, pass the plate and allow each uh, person to take a piece of matzah bread there. You can get up and move around, it's okay. And then when you're done with that, if you could each pass the cup and uh, pour a cup and, and make sure everybody has one. And then when we're finished, uh, we'll, we'll get into... All right, I won't put you on the spot to stand up and say this, but once everybody's finished, uh, I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give you the most senior man willing at each table uh, some words to say to everyone at your table. Okay. And as we're finishing up, I'm gonna go ahead and read that again from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And so as we eat the bread and we drink the cup, it's a, it's a statement of our belief that it was Jesus' death, his, 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 his pierced body, hands and feet pierced to the, his beaten body, right? And his, and his blood spilled for us that pays for our sin and gains us uh, forgiveness and relationship with God, okay? So... Most senior man at each table willing. I would like you to uh, hold up uh, your piece of bread that you have. 
and I would like you to say to your table, this is Christ's body given for you. And afterwards, go ahead and eat. Amen. And then I'd like you to uh, say to your table now, this cup is the cup of the new covenant in Christ's blood given for you. Lord God, we thank you, praise you. Lord, we remember what you did for us today, and we celebrate you. You are our Lord, you are our God, you are our Savior, you are our King, our Creator, our Judge, and you do all things well, God. Every decision, every choice you make, every word you've spoken is wonderful, Lord, and we praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
Isaiah, as we spend uh, just a few minutes praying together, this is what um, the prophet Isaiah said in the Old Testament uh, hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. And uh, like this stuff is affirmed by historians, um, scientists, and so as Pastor James was saying, uh, the Old Testament is filled with prophecies about Jesus Christ, and uh, this is one of them. It says this in Isaiah 53, starting in verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, meaning Jesus. Yet we, estim we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So I want us this morning just to... Thank God for the truth of the gospel. That is, his word says, we're all like sheep going our own way. We think we know the right answer to everything. Um, but God brought us, he redeemed us, brought us back to himself, bought us with the price of his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, thank him for that this morning and just praise him for his goodness in that. and are comfortable and would like to go and uh, around the table and share some prayer requests with each other. Um, we're doing this because of the community factor, right? So we're all sitting with our towns so we can get to know each other. Um, feel free to open up, share what's going on in your life and your heart. Uh, let, let each other, uh, let us pray for you. Let the people at your table pray for you, pray for those people. Spend a few minutes doing that if you're comfortable. As we wrap up, or uh, keep singing rather, if you're getting baptized this morning, 
I want to let you know you can make your way to the back of the room and find Bobby, um, and he can show you where to go to change. There's no rush or anything. We're going to keep singing for a little bit. But as you wrap up praying, um, don't feel pressure to rush, but he's waiting for you to show you where to change, and we'll get that process started.
Amen, church. Hey, we're excited this morning to celebrate with about a dozen people who have decided to follow Jesus in the step of baptism. So grab a seat. We're getting set up. Um, we're going to have it on the screens projected, so get settled in, and we'll celebrate with them. So, Dan, I hear you're getting married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dan is uh, going to marry uh, our daughter, Christy. I'm Christy. I pulled a Biden. I'm sorry. Our daughter, Maggie. People always ask me if Christy is my daughter. I'm sorry. Okay, Dan, have you turned from your life apart from Jesus to him for salvation? Yes. You believe that he's the son of God and your savior? Yep. Then on your, on your profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death. gospel. And uh, her husband Dave's here. Uh, awesome. Good. And so, Gretchen, have you turned from your life apart from God to Jesus Christ for salvation? Yes. You believe that he is the son of God, your savior? Yes. Yes. Then I baptize you, my sister, in okay. the name of the Father, Lord, Son, Holy Spirit. 
spirit, bearing the likeness of his death. salvation? Do you believe that he is God's son, yes. your savior? Yes. <laughs> then upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, <laughs> Son, and Holy Spirit, bearing the light of the Bearing the God to Jesus for salvation? Yes. Do you believe he's God's son and his savior? Yes. And I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his death. apart from God to Jesus Christ for salvation? Yes. And uh, do you believe that Jesus is God's son and he is your savior? Then upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of his death, raising the likeness of his death. Hadassah, Lydia, and Abby. Where's Mo? Mo's dad's right there. Hannah, have you turned from your life apart from God to Jesus Christ for salvation? Do you believe that he is your Savior, the Messiah, the Son of God? Yes. Then upon your profession of faith, I baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bearing the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Hey, this is Austin. Austin goes to life school that, that, that meets in our in our here, and he's become a believer. And uh, it's great to have you, Austin, and great to take in the step of faith. Have you turned from your life apart from God to Jesus Christ for salvation? Do you believe that he is God's son? Your Savior? Yes, and on your, bat on your profession of faith, I baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. apart from God to Jesus Christ for salvation. Yes. You believe he is God's son, your savior. Yes. yes. And I baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Christ for salvation. Yes. Do you believe he is God's son, your savior? Yes. Then we baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 
Everybody, this is Hayden. Hayden. Where's mom and dad? Where are you? Steven, Jenna. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hayden, have you turned from your life apart from God to Jesus Christ for, sal for salvation? Yes. Yes, you believe he's God's son, your savior. Yes. Then I baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death. Come on, Tim. Tim's pretty new. Say hey to Tim. How long have you been in the Thanksgiving. Just Thanksgiving. Great. All right. Uh, I think John had to play a pretty good part in you coming to, uh, to Christ and to Meeting House. Is that true? For sure. Yeah. Amen. Good work. Have you turned from your life apart from God to Jesus Christ for, for salvation? Yes. You believe that he is God's son and your savior? Yes. Yes, and we baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death. Jesus Christ for salvation. I have. You believe that he is God's son, your savior. Absolutely. Yes, and we baptize you, our brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Say hello to Lois, Stan's mother. Fantastic. Lois, it's good to have you. Have you turned from your life apart from God to Jesus Christ for salvation? Yes. You believe that he is God's son, your savior. Amen. Then we baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A couple steps forward. Buried in the likeness of his death. What a great day at Meeting House Church, isn't that right? All right. Before we get started, I just got a couple quick announcements. Uh, and the first is this. Um, we've got Easter coming up, right, here in a couple of weeks. We're doing an Easter egg hunt here at the Town Hall Lawn on uh, April 16th. It's going to be starting at 9 a.m. We need volunteers for that. So if, you, if you're willing, just come on out. We need help with that. Just come talk to me. We'll get you signed up. And then uh, hopefully when you came in, everybody received a what's happening sheet. If you are a parent of a teenager that is in youth group, I need you to listen to me for just a quick sec. We have a parents, conf a parents meeting immediately after the service on May 1st. We're just going to go right into the Connection Center. We've got some amazing things happening in youth group this summer that I would just want to fill you in on, talk to you about, and, uh, you know, just get to hang out with one another for a little bit, all right? All right, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to start eating. I'm sure everybody's been smelling the food for the last hour and a half, and it just gets better by the minute. We're going to start with this row here, and they're going to go up and out. I promise you that is not convenient because I just so happen to be sitting over here. That's not the reason. But we're just going to start here, and then when this is done, we're just going to go one by one, all right? Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, uh, just thank you for the day. 
God, we got to celebrate 12 people getting baptized and professing their faith in you, God, and that's just awesome. So thank you for that. God, thank you for everybody who prepared food for today so that we can just enjoy each other's fellowship and get to know one another, God. So I just ask that you bless this time of fellowship, God. We get to know one another. We get to grow in relationships, Lord, and just uh, let us have fun. In your son's holy name, amen.